Hello beautiful people, my name is Riva and I'm currently teaching myself to tattoo. You see here in the beginning, I'm just setting up everything, laying down some plastic wrap, trying to make everything nice and clean, wearing gloves and everything. Putting on stencil stuff at the moment and um, yeah, just preparing to tattoo some pretty simple designs I wanted to start off with. Now this is not my very first time tattooing. I, like I said, I was in an apprenticeship or I was in two apprenticeships. The second one is where I did start it on some fake skin. I only did about three like outlines and a little bit of shading, so nothing major. So I did want to start with the basics. So here we're just gonna open up um, a tattoo kit that I bought, the Mass Tour Fold. No, that's not what it was. We got some Mass Pro cartridges, whatever that is, gloves I think it was, gauze. A little thing of ink, which kind of sucks actually, it's kind of very thick and sticky. Some transfer paper, some stickers, which are useless, and a little pin to mark thing. I also bought separately a printer, which I'll open up later terribly, and some natural gloves. I also purchased another box of mask cartridges. That's just some generic fake skin from Amazon. Some more transfer paper that I had lying around. And now here's me open up this stencil printer box, which for whatever reason I could not for the life of me get open. Come on, you're smart. Do it up. Oh, look at there, right there, easy. Open it like nothing ever happened. Now this is an ATS-886 printer, which I can't recommend because it kind of broke on me in within like a week. So I don't recommend that. Here's me open up the second box, which I had trouble opening. The machine looks really nice. The Mass Fold 2. I think I said Pro earlier, but this is the Mass Fold 2. It has adjustable stroke. Now, one thing I definitely didn't like about it was it has like a very bulbous end at the end of it, which makes it very uncomfortable on my hand. It comes with two batteries, some cords for plugging into things, some extra internal parts. I think it's made with like a flywheel device, which I heard is not the most consistent, and I kind of found that out myself. So the first day, I, I decided I wanted to kind of keep everything, like I said, pretty simple, and I was just going to do like an hour a day of tattooing. Eventually, I, I got really bored of that, and so I started doing like more full pieces, but I did just want to kind of start out simple and not get in over my head because I needed to practice a lot of the basics still. So here I'm just pulling a line and I'm going to tell you right now, everything you see in this video is absolute garbage. Every single thing, all the lines, everything. I was having so much trouble and you're not going to see it, but I was cutting through this thing like crazy. I think my voltage was at about seven volts starting off with and I kinda had to figure that out. Like I said, this was a new machine. I had only practiced a little bit while I was in my apprenticeship. I really still had to figure out a lot of things. I was just cutting through this like crazy to the point where I was like cutting my glass table, which is definitely not what you want. So you're gonna see at the end of this how horrible all of these lines look. They look pretty decent from far away. But they're all terrible. Another thing that I was having so much trouble with was my stencil stain. Now I let this sit for 24 hours. I let this sit for a day and it did absolutely nothing. Everything smeared. Actually the entire time I've had so much, so many issues with the stencil stain there, even after like two or three days. I'm just doing some simple shapes, triangles, little tree, bush, uh, flower thing. I don't know. And the uh, these things are hard to clean. Just FYI, but I was using a little bit of Vaseline. Look at there. Look at is can you even call these lines? They're not even connected. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Now, it does get better, uh, but slowly <laughs> it gets better. All of this is terrible. So day two, 
and we're trying to do some shading. And the goal here was just to get some smooth gradient shading. And so you see my drops mixture, just mix it with water. I'm using a nine round mag because that's the biggest size that I have. The box of needles that the kit came with were only a box of, I believe, five round liners. And so that's why I had to buy like a box of mixed, which came with three round, five round, uh, a nine round shader, a nine round mag, and then a, just a regular nine mag oh, and a seven round liner. So this is the nine round mag or nine curve mag, either way. And yeah, just trying to figure out how to get it nice and smooth. What I did learn when I was in the shop, because I, I tried this on my own the first time, um, you really have to be patient with this. This is something you really, really need to be patient with. It. And you see me adjusting my hand a lot here, and that's where the uncomfortableness of the machine came in at. Just mega uncomfortable on my hand. I mean, it could be different for somebody else, but I just found it to be a little too uncomfortable for me, so I kept adjusting it. I apologize for my hair being there. I later on got better angles to look at but you know what it looks pretty decent from far away get up close and I'll show you that not so magnificent And on the um, right side, I just wanted to do the same thing with the three round liner, just trying to use a mag and get a nice smooth gradient as well as a three round liner. Although I'm not showing this entire process because you know, it's pretty much the same thing. You're trying to slowly build and get a smooth gradient. Here's the end results which my gosh these lines are not connected but the gradients they are they're okay they're pretty good they're pretty, they're decent day three going back to lines again trying to get comfortable just putting down the basics doing straight lines i think these turned out a little bit better my voltage as you can see is down a lot lower which i think helped me out just trying to match my hand speed and the machine voltage to get a better line pool and I think it kind of worked out well. Now starting this I had so much I can't really wipe on these things like I said I let them sit and I think at some point I started to even blow dry them for like a couple hours because I was having so much trouble with the other one. But it still was smearing like crazy. So a lot of these, a lot of the ones that I'm doing are kind of going to be like very black because I can't wipe everything off like I want to. Yeah, I'm just kind of going in blind and trying to do the best that I can with the lines and trying to figure it out. Here's the original design that I had. For my flash page which you can see i wanted to do black and gray just to kind of get the basics i wasn't good at color so it's trying to do some black and gray I had to do a lot of figuring things out, a lot of putting down some lines in some places where I wasn't exactly sure lines should be, even though this is my design. By the way, the needles that I'm using in this is a seven round shader on the outside of it. I believe I'm using a uh, five round liner for the little details, like the lines on the inside of the um, the cactus, which is what this is, and the teeth. I 
I ended up having to go over a lot of my lines. I think with fake skin in general, you just kind of have to go over lines a little bit more. And here's the end results, which the lines I think look better than the, you know, first day. However, a lot of them are not fully in there. But for the most part, they look a little bit better. I did go over them again. And it looks okay. I'm, you know, I'm not mad at it. It's not bad. Day four for shading. Like I said, I did do all of these individually by days. Line day one, shading day two. I switched it up for the following week so I can get the full 360 range of practice. And also it's just, you know, so I feel like it's just better if I can do it like that. Again, what I found with this is that you really have to slowly build everything. Now, I was not using a reference, which I highly, highly recommend for you to do if you're practicing. I don't know why I was being a little dumb dumb and thinking, oh, okay, this is my design. I don't know how to shade it. I did not. It's not going to look good. It's just not, but practice is practice. So uh, after this, I definitely use a reference from then on out. Patience, 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 patience. If you're learning to tattoo and you're practicing on face skin, patience is necessary. This, at least as far as I've heard, requires a lot more passes than normal skin does. I will get to see that because I'll be practicing on myself sometime soon. And one mistake I definitely made was only using one direction with my shading on this thing. Uh, you definitely have to, in order to fill in the gaps and make it not look the way it's going to look at the end, use varying directions and try to like get a nice smooth blend. I'm using a three round liner to shade by the way. This could have been so much cooler of a design. Like I, I like the drawing that I made. However, the way that I executed it in this tattoo is not that it's absolutely atrociously horrible, but it just doesn't look good. And it could have been much better if I had planned it out a lot better. I'm just haphazardly shading things where I think that they might go. And here's the final look. It's not the absolute worst thing in the world. Definitely not the best. You can see all the directional shading. It just makes it look weird. Kind of looks ashy overall, honestly. Like, yeah, it just looks ashy to me. So it's not, not the best design. I kind of ruined my drawing, um, but not to be too hard on myself. Like I said, practice, patience, learning, experience as you get better. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope to see you in the next one. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.